to Japan was actually a museum trip. I was there, I had some museum uh, things to do on the ground, but of course I also went to the Taito Pinich and everything you're gonna see today. But I'm gonna leave the museum stuff out. So I took five million photos, and I promise I'm not gonna show them all. And what I'm trying to show you is just the interesting, the highlight plates that I, I saw in Japan. I'm gonna introduce them to you, and basically what the little trips we did over there on the place. So, flying out, it was a long 14 and a half hours, direct flight to Haneda. Uh, I was arriving Friday night evening, Friday night rush hour, was very nice with the suitcase. To get to the hotel from Haneda, I had to miss three trains, I had to give up, I had to take an Uber, but it is what it is, Friday night. And then Saturday, of course, first uh, day of Daito Kenichi. You know it all, you know the drill. It was actually very busy, there were big lines for a Saturday 10 a.m. when they opened. But then at the show it was nice. Uh, I saw some uh, members of our club there as well, over there. So you may, many of you have been there, it's the usual. A lot of people got a lot of swords, two floors, two days. Uh, anything is there you want to see, uh, study, purchase. It was very nice. And you know the displays, thousands of swords. And so let's uh, introduce a few interesting things that I, that I saw in particular in hand. So this plate here is a Tokubetsu Chuyo uh, Miike with origami. Uh, this plate is massive, it's very wide, it has a wide mihaba, it's, it's a long magasa. And this you have to see in hand because the photos. Uh, it's not that exciting, but in hand it's a very, very nice plate. Obviously, it's Tokuchu. Also, if you look at the, at the Oshigata, it doesn't look like much, but in hand, you have to uh, look at it in hand. And the interesting thing here is what I thought. It has the origami, uh, attributed to Miike by uh, Honabe Kocho, but they didn't know the provenance, and then someone remembered that I don't know, like 15 years earlier, there was another place, plate uh, submitted to Tokubetsu Chuyo, uh, this Aoi Kuniyuki, and this had the same envelope as the origami for the Miike. So now they know it's all Mori family heirloom. So sometimes you can uh, have to do a little detective work and the envelope is the same and they find out the provenance. And it's also, this is also a pretty rare plate because Aoi Kuniyuki, it's not a very well-known maker. Uh, but it was, not at the, it was not at the show, so I just pulled it out from my references because of the ori same origami. <coughs> uh, the next plate that I saw at Kurokawa's, which is one of my favorites from the whole show, uh, was this massive Tokubetsu Chuyo uh, first generation etches in Yasutsugu. So this plate, Katakiri Batsukuri, wide, long, and it looks like as it was made yesterday. It's a, it's a very, very impressive plate. Uh, I'm gonna show you the Oshigata here too. As you can see, uh, typical style, this wild tamon reaching high up, very, very long. And the interesting thing was, there was uh, another Tokubetsu Chuyu by Yasutsugo at the show, which I also saw, which is this one. Also very, very nice plate. It's long, actually, it's 32, 32 inches. And this plate, uh, let me say, 30% probably the provenance that pushed it over the finish line for Tokugawa Tree because it was worn by Tokugawa Iyasu's son, who founded the, the Kii branch of the Tokugawa, and then it became an heirloom of the, of the Kii branch. So this was also very nice to compare but I, I personally prefer the first plate, which is really, sometimes you find the Asatsuko places are inscribed with the supplements made for the last days. And this was one of those plates, which is not inscribed, but it would be like for the end of the zombie apocalypse. And then of course I was looking for the museum. I was looking for like a niche, interesting and rare stuff. For example, this very uh, long and massive plate, similar to what we also had here at the table earlier. Uh, Shin Shinto with his original mounts by a relatively unknown maker, Sendai Morikuni, who was studying with Sendai Kunikane. But those you know, there's some interesting things which might like fill gaps at the museum, what we don't have in our collection. And 
Also, for example, uh, a nice uh, Chuyo uh, Naginata with uh, late Muramachi mounts. That's the mounts here and the plate. <coughs> the Naginata actually is called Konami no Hira and it's also Ubu. And then another oddity that I saw at the show was uh, this Taisho by. Uh, you may not know the maker, you may have heard about the maker, Sudo Kunitsugu. It was this late Muromachi, there were several generations of Kunitsugu. Sudo Kunitsugu, and he got his name because he signed the character for Kuni, like this bamboo fence, which is a Sudo, so he then named him Sudo Kunitsugu. And the interesting thing is, this kind of ensemble, I would say, passed Chuyo, uh, but actually only the katana, but the say on the Chuyo paper, it comes with the wakisashi by the same maker, but which dates later. So it's not really a daisho. Of course it was labeled as daisho at the show, but it was, you know, it was uh, Chuyo session 23. This is when the sessions where anything can happen. And, but it was interesting to see. Uh, I've never seen a, a Sudo Kunitsugu daisho, so this was also very nice to, to study in hand. It's one of the rare objects. Uh, so, then my personal highlights from the Daito Kenichi, there were also, of course, a ton of fittings, but uh, I left the fittings out for, for now. So, I also went, of course, to the MBHK Sword Museum, see what they have on, on the permanent display. I had a nice little uh, old, uh, display of how to make Minuki, <coughs> they had all the Minuki steps, they had some tools and everything, and uh, they also had the steps how to make a Sogan inlay. But, uh, I was uh, more interested in, in what I have on display right now. Very nice, that the Kokuho, the, the famous Akashi Raikune Yuki plate. And of course it's the Sword Museum. They have a very good lighting and you can see, you can see everything very well. So that's just the, the picture of the plate uh, itself. That's uh, the Oshigado of it. And as mentioned, you can you can really see the display, the plates very well at the, at the Sword Museum. It's perfectly lighted. You can go in, you can zoom in uh, on your phone and everything. Then, what also caught my attention was this uh, Tokubetsu Chuyu Daisho, which is early Edo with uh, Hosokawa provenance. All the fittings have this little Hosokawa mon. Uh, condition is not the greatest. So, hilts are not in a very good condition. But again, it comes and please uh, pay attention here. It doesn't have a real sum, it has a gold sheet that is embossed to, uh, to re resemble uh, the race. So, also, here's the detail. Hilt's not very good condition, but all oh, I can see there was a carbon on there. It's also Tokubetsu to Chuyo. And then another uh, interesting kosher right here. This one is a copy of a very famous national treasure mount. I think it's late here, early Kamakura. But the interesting thing here is uh, this, uh, this uh, Koshira has been copied a hundred times. So every other local museum has a copy of this. Some go back to Meiji, uh, Showa era. But this is the, the, I took a photo because this is the, the, uh, the best uh, copy that I have seen so far. Unfortunately, that didn't say on the label who the maker is, so I have to find out. So that's the original one on which it is based. It's in a, in a local shrine near Tokyo. National treasure. Here uh, I took a detailed shot. It's very subtle, it's very good. And now I show you another picture of another copy, and you can see the difference why this one is the, the best that I've seen so far. Because it can be very flashy if it's not really, if you don't tone it down. Uh, there's another one that's, that's in the Tokyo National Museum, so all the big museums have copies of this Koshira. A lot of craftsmen try, try to, to recreate this famous uh, red Koshira. And another nice plate I saw there on this plate, interesting plate, is Chuyu Bekasai uh, by a Neo Kiyotsuna, which is interesting because it looks very much like an Aoi plate. It's the white, it has some saka, some slanting elements in there. Here's a nice little habaki with base with the, the wild beast crest, if you want to figure out uh, whom it belonged to. And here you can see the Oshigada, it's very, there's a lot of, of slanting. Like you can, if you if, if it was on a kante, you would probably go for Aoi, Nabokcho Aoi. And here also again, you can really uh, zoom in, take photos, they have a very good display at the Sword Museum. Obviously, they're the Sword Museum. 
Uh, next plate was interesting was this uh, Kobise Masatsune, also a Chuyo Bunkasai. And you know the saying, some, sometimes you say there are plates, you can see the Utsuri from the other end of the room. And this was one of those plates. It has an interesting little uh, Mizukage like appearance at the base. But the Utsuri is really, you can wow. see it from, from everywhere in the room. It was in one corner and you, I don't, I don't kid you, if you were walking the door, you can see this plate right there is Utsuri. And it's also interesting is it's Kobisen, but it has its uh, Nambokcho or end of Kamakura Koshirai still. Very nice package, Chuyu Bunkase, obviously. So that was kind of the most interesting play I saw on their current display, and of course, walking out, pay respects to our, uh, our teachers, Homa and Sato. And also, interesting side notes those busts were actually made by Homa's son. And right. they got them here from the old Sword Museum, if you remember, and now they have the new Sword Museum there. Very nice. And then, of course, next day, we have to go to the Tokyo National Museum too, see what they have on their on the current display. Uh, very nice. They had the, the famous Naki Kitsune by Abataguchi Kuniyoshi in display. And I'm just going to show you the Yoshigara uh, of the plane. And here, interesting is the, the way the, the thick way the signature is chis chiseled with the honorary title. And also, uh, you can see a lot of the activities on the display. It's also very well lit. And, but I recommend if you go to Japan the next time, get one of these little uh, little glasses and you can really see a lot there. It's, it's, it's worth it. Also very nice, of course, I've seen it uh, uh, several times, <coughs> is the famous Okanehira, the massive Kanehira, 35 inches. Uh, beautiful, beautiful plates. As they say, one of the best plates ever produced, arguably. But it is, it is very impressive indeed. And what is also what I like very much is this uh, articulated dragon, the Chisai Okimono, by made by an armorer. And this thing is actually, it's actually this big. It's one of the largest. It's dated 1713, and it's made by uh, Miyoshi Muneakira, where we in the museum have those famous masks by the same maker. And I'll just show you some incredible details here. This thing is just insane. It's it's just a, a for me it's the best Chisei Okimono that's out there. But now I'm gonna go back one slide. And as a museum person, I have to say I don't like the headrest being that prominent. I wish they have like plexi or something. But it is what it is. It's still very very nice to see. And then. Uh, one of my favorite plates ever is Chuyo Bunkasai Horikawa Kuniyasu on display. It's also from the National Museum's collection. Uh, it's a, it's a, such an impressive plate, shape-wise and harmon-wise. I, I like it very much. And I just talked earlier to some of you. I think I more and more fall in love with the earliest Shinto guys. So Yadotsugu, Kunihiro, Kuniyasu, Hanke, and Smith like that. And uh, then, of course, there was also a nice session at Kurokawa-san at Sokendo. He was inviting a few of us for a Kante session. Uh, and I, I, I made Kurokawa laugh, laugh because I showed him this picture of me 20 years ago in front of his store. <laughs> it was exactly 20 years ago, 23. So it was, Nice when it was still skinny, and, <laughs> and you know, just go back. You know, when you go to a kante, you expect five plates, the traditional five plates. You're gonna do a little kante, and that's it. But the Kurokawa was actually 25 kante plates. Uh, no photos allowed, but I'm gonna show you the photos from my references. But I look at this lineup. <laughs> you have like everything there, from Tokubetsu Chuyo to Chuyo Bunkasai. I mean, Chuyo, I think, was the lowest level. But there was an insane lineup with everything you can imagine. It had two tables, 12 and 12, or 12 and 13, and then you, it was, a, it was a, a big help that it was sorted according to the tradition. So you start, ah, it's Yamashiro. <laughs> but it was a little tricky because it was not the regular order. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit like in, in a second about the difficulties. So 25 plates, and I, I think I tied with Nick from the American branch, we got 10 Atari. 
and the other ones I was pretty much in the ballpark of the Smiths, very close, but two really threw me off. And I'm gonna talk about them in a, in a second. Oh, let's, chat, let's start about those plays. The very first one, Rai Kunitoshi Saimei, it was so slanting that I had Rai Kunitoshi there and then crossed it out and, and out, put Aoi there. And some other members did the same, but it, was, it wasn't. So sometimes just trust your initial gut feel and leave the name there. And so just a few of the highlights we saw that there is this Tokuchu Abataku Jikuni Yoshi signed that was there to see and study. I think I've showed it in the in the in the lecture of the Abataguchi school. Uh, it's a very, very beautiful <coughs> plate, beautiful plate, healthy condition. And then there was this another Abataguchi Kunikiyo, a very rare maker. And this one threw me off a little because Kunikiyo is supposed to be early Kamakura, and I thought the shape is more like a little later early or mid Kamakura. So I counted it to Ayano Kuchi Sadatoshi, so I was off a little bit. Uh, also, very, of course, very beautiful plate. Then he had this uh, signed Hoshu Sadaoki, uh, also Tokubetsu Chuyo. And here you can see it was pure Mazame. And you can see the feature that the Mazame goes up the Kisaki. This is very typical for Hosho. So there was an easy to kante, relatively easy. And he had another Hosho plate, Mumei, but it was not next to the Hosho plate. There was a Shikaki no Renaga in between. So it was not that easy. It was the traditions were there, but they were all a little bit mixed up. So there was a Gocho Karenaga and a Sanjo Yoshi here, but they came after the Rai Kunitoshi and before the Abataguchi. So you have to pay attention. And then there was this next plate that really threw me off. I was, I could not count this if my life depended on it. It was Tokubetsu Chuyu Yamato Shisu. Uh, it is, I'm gonna show you Oshigata later. It's very, it's as a strong curvature. I was, uh, I couldn't see it at the end of Kamakura. I was, I was, I was way earlier. And it has all it has all these wild activities about the Hanon, like a lot of uh, Tobiyaki and Yubashiri. So I really I had troubles, difficulty, so I blanked out on this one, I left it out. And the next plate I could find in my references, it also threw me off. That was a uh, uh, Kinsoga Mei Sa, the Osa, but it was polished in a in a kind of uncommon experimental polish, which was very bright and white, so I can't add it to uh, no sada. But yeah, so that was the two plates I was really, I was really far off. And then here uh, there was a Shintogo Kunimitsu signed. There was a Mazamune, which I couldn't find in my references, which I accidentally attributed to Sadamune because it was very curved and had futa, futa sushi he. So I was off by one maker, but it was a Mazamune. And he, had, he did have a Sadamune too, the Chuyu, this Chuyu Bunkasai here too. Uh, which was also very, very nice to see, which was also an instant Atari, so it was easily identifiable as a Salamone there. And then he had some, then there came the Bisen section, which I didn't uh, find in my, I, I found some of my references, but I didn't want to just put all the plates down there today. There was a Nagamitsu, there was a Kobisen, there was a Sane Naga, and there was a Kamakura Ichimonji Sukisane, and then we were entering like the yeah, social inspired, like Norishige Daito, uh, Go Yoshihiro Daito, and uh, this uh, Norishi, Sai Norishige Kanto. And it was a light, tiny little Kanto, it was very prominent Hara, the way it was polished, so I actually counted it to Shinshinto Norishige copy, but it was the original, so I was off here too. And then the last plate was another Tanto, student of Norishige, uh, it was the, the Kashu San Kage dated, also very important reference, which is very wild to I don't remember what I attributed it, but it was kind of close in the vicinity of Norishige somewhere. But you know, 25 plates, everyone took notes, no photos allowed. So okay. it was really a tough learning session there. And you get you get tired after a while and exhausted. <laughs> So then, uh, some of us there, we did a field trip down to Shizuoka. They had a nice exhibition there about Iyasu. And this one is based on the last uh, TV drama, NHK. They titled it, uh, What Will You Do, Iyasu? That was the TV drama. And they had this, 
exhibition. Unfortunately, it was only running very, for a very short time, like a little over a month. And they had all, uh, a lot of objects obviously related to Ieyasu, armors, letters, prints, uh, paintings, and swords. And just as a little back information, Shizuoka Prefecture is where Ieyasu had his Sumpu Castle, so that it has a, a local connection there, where Ieyasu grew up and also then later retired. They had this uh, boy's armor, it's a tiny armor, that was given to Ieyasu when he was 14 years old by his uh, hostage taker, uh, Imagawa Yoshimoto, for his Genpuku ceremony. So he, Ieyasu wore this when he was 14 years old, his very first armor wearing ceremony. So that was very nice to see this on display, I've never seen it before. Then of course they had the very famous uh, fern armor, that's what I call it because of the the fern maedate on the helmet that was worn by Ieyasu at Sekigahara. This was on display. And then they had also, uh, uh, as mentioned, related objects like this famous armor of uh, Honda, uh, who was one of Ieyasu's, Ieyasu's generals. So they had this armor there. Then they had this Namban armor that Ieyasu gifted to one of his generals, uh, Sakakibara Yasumasa. This was on display as well. And they had a few more. And of course, they had also a lot of good plates. One of them was the Kokuho, the uh, Nakatsukasa Mazamune. It was also in the, in the collection of the Honda we have seen before. This was on display, which was very nice to see. They had one more Mazamune. They had the Yuga Mazamune there in the Tanto, uh, which you had to see in hand. It looks very, I have to say, very unimpressive in the case. Small little tanto in a big case, so you have to you have to start in hand. But it was there, it was nice to see. Uh, then they had this plate, uh, oops, yep. The Kokuho, the Abataguchi Hisakuni. Very long Ugu Saime plate. Beautiful. And this is the interesting one that has the the monogram at the end of the tank, which is not the monogram of the maker. It's unidentified. They assume it's by a later owner, but that's the plate that has the cow. There's only the one that exists by Watakuchi Hisakune. Then I had some, another very impressive plate here, uh, another national treasure, was a Funesani mix. Very healthy, very striking plate there. There is the Oshigada to it. Then, uh, they had this plate here, the, what's nicknamed the Sohaya no Tsurugi, which there are several theories about the nickname. I'm not gonna uh, go into this detail now, but this was the plate. It's attributed to Mitsuyo. It's wide, uh, very wide, very impressive plate. And when Iyasu was on his deathbed, he had ordered to, that this plate was brought to him, that he was unboxed and drawn and handed to him and he wanted to swing it around a few times. And then he said, still the issue with the former Tokugawa, uh, the former Toyotomi in the West, it's not really resolved yet. I'm gonna die soon. And when I'm gonna be in the Toshogu, please put this plate with the tip to the West so it's gonna wards off the evils coming from there. So this plate was there, it was very nice to see. Everyone was amazed that this is uh, regarded as a late Heian blade, it's very atypical because of its shape, but it's attributed to Mitsuyo and it also had uh, its koshirai, which goes back to the taste of Ieyasu and as you can see it blends, uh, it, it links to the style of koshirai I was talking about the last time, the Tenchu style at the very end of Muromachi, uh, it's very sober uh, blade styles and then I had another very, very striking blade here, this Kokohone, Kubis and Sanetsune, Ugu signs, and look at the length, it's 35 inches. Uh, it's a monster. It's, uh, so this one, it was next to the, the Koshirai of the Mitsuyo I showed earlier, and it takes up, up an, an entire case, and they had its traditional, its lacquer box there too, so it was a very a striking case at the, at the very end of the show. And then because we were going to Shizuoka with the Shinkansen, it's on the way to the Sano Museum. So on the way back, we stopped. You step out of the train, Mount Fuji there, it was beautiful. 
We walked over to the Sano Museum, where a lot of you may also have been in the past. So currently they had a display of, of contemporary works there, a modern suba, modern blade, polishing contest, but they did have a few of their goodies there too, which was absolutely worth it to see. So they had the famous the Matsui Go from their collection on display, the Shuyo Bunkasai, with the, the Honami uh, Shumei. That was nice to see. Uh, then they had their, their Chuyo Kuichitsu in the, the Hiromits, the social Hiromits that is dated. And this is interesting because this is the blade I've written about in one of my books. It's called Kasha Giri, the killer of the Kasha. Because Kasha are those kind of demons that come when you die and you were a bad person right before you die. And this Hiromitsu accordingly killed two of those. And if you look at the characters, Kasha means fire cart, and that's the name of the demons because they pull like this fire cart behind them. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to see this blade. Then they had another massive 32, almost 33 inches. That's the Okane Mitsu, the Meibutsu, also from their collection, Chuyu Bunkasai. Very nice, very impressive to see. Because yeah, I, I just keep repeating myself how, how impressive they are. If you read the dimensions usually, but then you see them in a case and you see like the whole thing there. It's just an, another level if you see them live. And then they had this uh, uh, Kuni there, which is interesting because it has the, the pierced, the horimono, the Ramas Kashi. So you can see through this, this horimono down here which is a nice, uh, interesting feature there. And of course, which is also in their collection, they have the famous Tombogiri, the Yare, that was also on display. So it was very good, even though they only had like a handful from their collection on display, it was absolutely worth it. And they have a, they have a beautiful garden, so it was a nice little uh, field trip. Uh, and they also, oh yeah, of course, I almost forgot, they have also they had the Masamune there too from their collection. So absolutely worth it, it was a great trip. I think we were five people. We went there as Thanksgiving on the Thursday. Beautiful trip. And then, uh, aside from the museum stuff there, I went obviously also in the local the bookstores mm -hmm. and I spent there two days. I was hunting for treasures. I bought some books. There was like researchers' heaven. <laughs> so a whole afternoon <laughs> looking at all the all this. Uh, as you know, there's a whole street with all antique bookstores uh, near Kanda. So. Yeah, your dream as a writer and translator over there. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up soon. I'm not gonna show you all 550 Brazilian plates I saw. Obviously, there was a lot of good food. <laughs> so I was always, I was texting home and my wife constantly replied, are you not tired of sushi yet? <laughs> but no, after, <laughs> you can't get tired of sushi over there. No, at least not after a week and but the most important part, and I don't say this because I'm polite, it was truly uh, to see a lot of friends that I haven't seen, some I haven't seen in 15 years. So it was, a, it was very good to see, see people from the club, to see people from Germany, from Italy, there were groups from Germany, Italy. Uh, we, did the, we did the boat trip, uh, uh, Tokyo Bay and everything. So that was our one big highlight, to reconnect with a lot of people after, after, after oh, nice. almost a decade. So. That was my humble report of the trip in Japan. I hope you had fun. When you, when you went to the bookstore, is everything like organized, or you have to actually go from aisle to aisle? And to... Some booksellers have like craftsmen, craft sections or art sections, and one bookstore has a sword section. But otherwise, you are on your own. You have to have to look. When you were at Kurokawa, you, uh, you said one of the blades was a Shintogo. Mm -hmm. Was that a Daito or a Tanto? It was a Daito. It was signed and had this sign. The signature was at the very tip of the Nakago. Yeah. It's a very narrow Suguha, Suguha Cho Hamon, but a uh, perfect Chigane, okay. Tokuchu. Thank you. Any more you want to know? Some details? Did you see the mm -hmm. uh, Nurishige that was on the cover of the Daitokanichi catalog? Uh, I think I saw it, yeah. I think I saw it, yeah. But it's, it gets blurry in hindsight. Yeah. Now, as mentioned, my highlight, my personal highlight was the Tokuchu 
first generation Yasutsugu, it was just such a beautiful way. So, it sounds like a good trip. It was a very good trip. The, pho the photo on the right, was that uh, Mishindo? The, the bookshop? Ah, yeah. It's, because they don't, they're not operating online anymore. But no, that it's, that, that's a Shindo. Okay, yeah. Shindo. They've shut down the website. But oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Like three, you know, several years ago, I think. Yeah, but they did have a Shindo, they have, they have like this one and another one on the other side, all the sort books, sort of our books. <laughs> so it was really amazing. I have a lot of those already. The museum has some, but I found some little gems. So. Did you find any uh, 19th century books or earlier? No, I was looking. I was looking for some early prints, but no luck this time. Okay. Quit to buy a book. <laughs> Chris? Uh, I just gotta say thank you so much. I mean, to be able to put that together, mm -hmm. you know, along with Oshigana and mm -hmm. descriptions, mm -hmm. an absolute treat. And, you know, yeah. you gotta realize what Marcus does for us. Yeah, it's a, amazing and beautiful because even if you were to go to Japan on your own and see certain things, you may not be able to look it up so easily, reference it, mm -hmm. know, know it, understand it, like the way he's putting it together for us. Thank, so you. thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. Kurokawa does it for his clients and he also does it around the Daito Genichi, but it was a special invitation, but there was a lot of people there, there was young collectors I've never met, there were some groups here from the US, some friends that I know, mm -hmm. so all in all I would say 15 people or so there, yeah, it was a nice little meeting. And not what I expected, because I expected five Jod plates. You're judging by the plates, they <coughs> put to yeah. the counter. I mean, it's, it's not normal, I would say. Yeah, I, I, put some on my <laughs> I put some on my menu list. I uh, told Kurokawa what I want to see each year when I go back. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. I've actually paid <coughs> quite a lot of tables for kind of people. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thank you.